Hey guys, this is a little extra video basically uh, that's going to cover some of the topics that Nier raises and kind of explains what the hell is actually going on. Um, I'm basically going to be starting with the background story of Nier um, and how that all plays in. I've dropped bits and bobs as we've been going through the game. Uh, been kind of dropping bits at the end of videos, uh, with obviously bits of forms of text, uh, doing some of the weapon background stories and stuff. But let's get over and done with. Um, so. This, the game Nier, is a direct sequel to the game Drakengard that was released on the PlayStation 2 back in, I believe, 2001. Was it 2002? I forget. Um, let's go over briefly what Drakengard was about. Uh, Drakengard was a game that starred a, a protagonist called Kaim, and he was, to put it, uh, put it lightly, really, a psychopath. Um, he's a psychopath who happened to make a pact with a dragon called Angelus. They were both wounded enough and they weren't going to survive without each other. This pact allowed them to basically feel and feel each other's thoughts, like feel each other's pain, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, Drakengard was a very, very long, long, and I have to be honest, rather tedious game. It's a fascinating game to play story-wise. Uh, the story itself is really quite cool. It's really bizarre, it's creepy, uh, and very, very weird. Um, it's very, very weird, there's no really way around that, it's incredibly strange. Um, I've mentioned before in one of the videos, your party members are, of course, the main character who's a psychopath, a cannibal woman who had to give up her womb, a paedophile, uh, an eternal child, and a bold man. The bold man being slightly out of place compared to the rest, mind you. Anyway, um, the, basically, Drakengard had th uh, five endings, A, B, C, D, and E, as you can probably guess, it's very similar in structure to Nier was. Uh, st st ending A, I believe, is the canon one. They save the day, stuff happens. Hooray! Uh, ending B, C, D are all equally strange. I'm not actually going to spoil anything. I don't want. I don't want to say a word about Drakengard because it is so bizarre. I think you should experience it for yourself, if you can trudge through the game. I mean, if it really is quite a struggle at points. It's not. I'm trying to be nice to Caviar here, but it's it's more like it seems that Caviar is just trolling the player as opposed to actually having a good time. The word game seems to come to mind, but game implying fun and, and, and something enjoyable, whereas Drakengard doesn't always quite meet that. Anyway, ending E of Drakengard is acquired by, ho ho, funnily enough, collecting all of the weapons. Once Kame has all of the weapons and you get to the ending sequence, uh, something different happens. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil too much of Drakengard, but I suppose it's important, so heads up, spoilers. Uh, the big final boss basically opens up a portal to our world, uh, and modern day our world, in fact, as Drakengard is basically in an upside down version of our world. Uh, all the continents are flipped, the map is essentially upside down, if you imagine a standard world map and you go from their world to our world in a dimension shift. And of course, Kane being the angry psychopath he is, must of course murder this thing, Even doesn't even care where he is at this point. So him and Angelus go about and uh, kill the final boss, which is the giant, or the giant statue if you'd like. Um, the giant statue gets killed. Um, hooray! That, that is good. And about half a second later, Kane and Angelus are obliterated by F-14s, I believe. Um, which shreds them, and uh, Kame's weapons that were on his body get blasted across the land. Boom! All the weapons he had on him. Which is why, connecting to Nier, that all the weapons you collect are, all, are basically all of Kame's old weapons, more or less. Some weren't, but the ma vast majority were, which is why, of course, they have connections to Drakengard. Hooray! Connections. Uh, Angelus is dead, uh, the giant is dead, and Kame is smooshed. Although, knowing Kame, he probably was a very angry corpse and killed anyone who got near him. Seriously, you should all play Drakengard, it's very good. It's just equally extremely strange. So, um, now, that is obviously how Nier starts, but that doesn't really explain what the hell is going on. So, there is a huge document that is available on the internet that I have been using. Um, I, also, I own the original version of this, I own the Japanese text, it's called Grimoire Nier, that explains a lot of this. Uh, it's all in Japanese, and of course I'm using the translated guide on the Google Docs, which is good. Type in Grimoire Nier into Google, you'll find it, it's a very good read. Anyway, uh, in Grimoire Nier, it explains exactly what happens after this. Um, a load of people get to the corpse and of the of the giant and the dragon, and they are put away into storage safely to be experimented on because most people are like, "What the hell?" Um, when the giant exploded and died, uh, it released lots of uh, ash, I think, salt or similar, and it blasts across the land of Japan. Um, slowly, this started to infect people with what's called white chlorination syndrome, which again keeps popping up throughout the game. This, in turn, infected people, it made them ill, um, and it turned them into what was called Legion. And Legion were basically insane, crazy people, I suppose, that had been transformed with this white chlorination syndrome. Um, and out of every so many million of Legion, 
uh, there were one, there were red eyes, which were the leader they could organise. But this is slightly later. Anyway, what happened after this was uh, the, everything was experimented on, and they discovered magic, uh, as you see in the game, the red orbs that are being shot, the the way the grimoires work, that kind of thing. Everything magic based is, is found by they can pull. I believe they pull magic out of the other dimension, out of the Drakengard dimension, and they can use it that way. So they can they can send and retrieve from that dimension, which allows the modern world to discover this magic, which is great. Great. Um, however, as this is going on. Japan is going to hell, essentially. I'm speeding up, by the way. I do suggest looking at Grimoire near. It does cover this in vastly more detail. But slowly but surely, white chlorination syndrome is beginning to spread, and the main area is infecting is what's called, I believe it's uh, Shunjinko. Now, the Shunjinko area is, uh, a wall is erected around this area called the Walls of Jericho, which, if anyone who knows the story, is probably a bad thing to call your wall if you want to keep it up, but never mind. Um... Just sort of biblical stories aside, that they put up a wall to try and contain all the uh, Legion in there, which seems to do the job for the time being. Um, slowly but surely, though, things go from bad to worse, and it spreads. Other countries get involved, America mostly, in telling Japan they need to sort their mess out. Um, the dragon and the giants remains are moved from where they were hosted, and they continue to be experimented on elsewhere. Um, Things get from bad to worse further, the walls fail, um, the white chlorination syndrome begins to spread throughout all of Japan. Stuff is not looking good, so the decision ultimately is made to nuke Japan. So Japan is completely obliterated, unfortunately that means that all that really did was stop it temporarily. Okay, so white chlorination syndrome, boom, nukes, everything's wiped out, this is great. Still with me everyone? It's getting complicated, isn't it? Again, if you really want, after watching this video, have a look at the Google Docs. It covers this a lot better. Um, I'm obviously going over by what I essentially what I remember and what I'm trying to explain. And I'm doing it somewhat out of sequence, trying to make it as easy as possible. There's a lot of depth to the backstory. There's huge amounts of depth in this grimoire near, and it's worth looking into if you like the story. Anyway, so white chlorination syndrome is wiped out, as is Japan. Such is life. Everyone gets on with experimenting on the remains. Um, as this is going on, Emil is uh, born and started to be experimented on. Oh, that's annoying. Sorry, a video just started in the background. Go away. Anyway, um, so Emil is uh, around and started to be experimented on. He's obviously uh, he's named the weapon number. They wanted to make something that was so powerful and used magic that could destroy anything. And that's what they made. They made the, the weapons, the magic weapons. This is good. They experiment. Hooray! However, as this continues, they find out that around the world, white chlorination syndrome begins popping up. Mainly because the nuke didn't actually get rid of it, it just spread it. Go figure. And because of that, uh, basically, the world start is beginning to end. Um, there are resistances everywhere. There's outbreaks of rebellion, outbreaks of white chlorination syndrome. People are fighting. There's a huge amounts of huge amounts of uh, resistances all over the place. They even have their own squadron names. That dedicated to taking out the Legion and the Red Eyes, and slowly but surely it is looking worse and worse and worse, and so an extra plan comes up, called the Gestalt Project, which is where, as you probably heard in the game, where your soul is removed and kept safe, and a shell is made for you, and the idea is you put your so the soul back into the shell, and then you continue living, but, of course, there was no way of stopping the disease, so they had to wait for it to die out naturally. Obviously, there's, when there's no one else to infect, then there's no more disease. Great. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, it didn't necessarily go well. Um, they had no real way of controlling um, what eventually were shades. People would give up their um, bodies and become uh, a gestalt, I suppose, and they would go crazy. They went crazy every single time without fail. They had no way of controlling it, and this was obviously a major setback in their big project plan. The only thing they really could do at this point was keep searching for someone who could stabilise the shades. Um, that's why they made the grimoires. Uh, the grimoires are made out of people, <laughs> as is everything. Um, they were people, I believe, who were susceptible to magic, and they made them into the grimoires. And the idea was, you touched a grimoire, it would, it would start the, pro the process off, it would rip out your soul, forcibly. And all they'd do is go into, J uh, go into the J Japan area at the time, and gather loads of people up, and make them touch the books, see what happened. Uh, Nier, the original Nier was one of these people. Um, he was gathered up because they were homeless. Nier and Yona were obviously scrounging for food, and they were told that they would be, it'd be safe, it'd be great, it'd be easy. So all they did was go and this, this experiment area, wait out, and 
Nier started to get the feeling that something wasn't quite right, so he nicked one of the books carefully, he, he wrapped it up and ran, uh, obviously uh, hearing the screams of what was happening to the people who touched the books. Immediately, of course, all those people began to shade and they ran after him, and the, that's where the game starts. It begins with Nier having taken Yona and just run out of the, the medical facility or the science facility, wherever they were, with the books, and hiding out in a, um, a old abandoned uh, shopping centre. Uh, I believe it's supermarket, isn't it? And suddenly being chased by loads of shades, and all those shades are the people they were just with, all these homeless people who were just rounded up. And that's where the game starts, with Nier killing all the people he just knew. Sad. And then, of course, Yona accidentally touches the uh, touches the book. Bam! Now, Yona obviously begins regressing, uh, immediately begins, um, what's the word? Going crazy, if you like, with the Gestalt project pro process, which is what the Black Scrawl is. It's the uh, it's a sign that everything's not quite right. And, of course, Nier touches the book, doesn't go mad, as you can see, and immediately gains huge amounts of magical prowess and physical strength, which is a sign that he's the perfect Gestalt. He's the, he's the one to... They found him, basically. He's the one who can sort everything out. Uh, he beat the crap out of all those shades. Hooray! Uh, unfortunately, Yona. It was a bit too late for Yona. Now, the scientists came out, and the medical personnel, finding out that Nier had, of course, touched the book. I assume they had some way of finding him. And uh, they said, great, you know, you are the perfect Gestalt. But he's like, my daughter, you know, my daughter's sick. She touched the book, and now she's going to die. Um, she's going to regress. They said, don't worry, we can sort this. We'll put your daughter into as basically suspended animation as part of the Gestalt project for now. We will keep her there until we've got a cure. But you need to stay alive and out of sus suspended animation of sorts, if you like, and make sure everything goes right. You you, you need to be alive and well so that all the shades can hook into you and no, no one goes crazy. And that's where it starts, really. That's where, you know, a thousand years passes as he essentially sets everything up for them. He slowly becomes more like Kaine does, if you like, uh, where Kaine was slowly getting taken over by the shade. Uh, the Shadow Lord originally started out looking just like Nier and looked human, but slowly but surely he looked sort of see-through and dark and black as they do, the shades. But he kept his mind the entire way through. For a thousand years he kept his mind. Um, of course, him not knowing that there was no way to reverse Yona's condition. Which is why the um, the replica version of Yona is always ill and always has the black scroll. Now there's something we need to cover as well, I think, so let's. I'm going probably going a little bit too far ahead of myself at this point. But the best way to look at this now is that's the beginning of the game. I'm missing out a huge amount of backstory, so I said please, please do look for the docs if you're, if you're interested. Right then, a thousand years later, we run into ye olde farmhand near cutting up goats, happy as could be. Dead wife, um, which was unfortunate, down to the disease, I believe, as he, he doesn't really elaborate too much, does he? And a daughter who's ill with the black with the black scrawl and that disease. He then finds a magic book. But so what is near? Now, there's, again, a few dro hints of drops that obviously he's a replicant, he's not real, he's not human. Um, main thing there that, obviously, these people live over and over again. Uh, originally, these replicants, they were made by magic, I think. Uh, the, the process allowed them to do this with the magic. Um, they were not sentient to begin with, they were just shells, empty shells who did nothing. They, they just did what they were told by the two androids. Uh, in this case, it was uh, Popola and Devola. They they like made a new shell each time it was necessary, got them to work, got them to do whatever, and just made and waited out the disease. That's all they had to do. Uh, Popola and Devola are only two androids in a huge, huge uh, group of androids. Um, I believe there's, they're all over the world looking after various replicants in different places. There's only one Shadow Lord though, and he happened to be this. This was the main area they kept him in, uh, presumably because it was the easiest place to keep him. Who knows? But, um, yes, yeah, so any time a, uh, a replicant died, the androids, their job was to go get them. I, the only way I can assume that worked, they had some sort of way of locating them, uh, basically recycling the body and making a new one, and then doing it again when they died and died and died. So these these androids have been alive a long time, but they didn't seem that worse for wear. They, they hadn't gone crazy. Um, they couldn't feel anything, but they seemed to be quite good at emulating empathy and human emotions pretty well. And they... I'd go as far as saying, especially at the end, Devler and Popola did care. They they certainly cared about the people they were looking after. Um, problem is, the the replica, I suppose, of the Shadow Lord was getting stronger and stronger and stronger each time. And while you're fighting the twins, they do mention they didn't think this. They didn't think they'd have to engage the replica for another hundred years or so. They didn't think he'd be strong enough. But they said they knew the Shadow Lord was getting angsty after waiting for so long and kickstarted the process. So your replica. 
your replica man, let's call him Nier for sake, let's call him Nier and Shadow for the sake of, of these, of use, I suppose. So Nier goes and finds uh, Grimoire Vice. Now Grimoire Vice is basically a program, a computer program, um, that was once a person, but he's a computer program that is a key to restarting the entire process. When Grimoire Vice and Grimoire Noir get together, the keys fit, the key fits the lock, if you like, the computer program activates, and it kickstarts the um, Gestalt project, project again. Everybody's uh, shells get invaded by their respective uh, soul, if you like. Problem is, of course, after so long and everything getting sentient, it made things a lot difficult. Um, the idea originally was that Vice would know this and know what he'd have to do and manipulate and scheme his way to make sure this happened. Unfortunately, Nier smacked the crap out of him and he couldn't remember anything. Um, which was a problem, obviously. But, hey, he helped Nier out and the rest is history. We know what happened. This this what happened in the game. Um, most of you obviously worked out what happened with the area and everything where the humans were living with the shades and they were already happy coexisting that they didn't need the Gestalt project. They, they'd already done that willingly. Um, and m the vast majority of shades had lost their marbles slowly. It was getting worse and worse and worse and there was nothing they could do about it. Even the Shadow Lord's influence could not keep it going for this long. Um, so getting towards the end of the game then uh, I'm kind of waffling a bit, and it's gone on for a very long time. I'm trying to explain as much as possible uh, to try and clear everything up. Anyway, so you kill the Shadow Lord. Shadow Lord dies. He screams, "Why? Why?" You know, his daughter. His daughter. Finally, after thousands of years, he finally got the body for his daughter. And then his daughter cared too much about the girl that was already there and killed herself. And Shadow Lord obviously was distraught. After a thousand years, he probably wasn't particularly with it as much as he would have been anymore, and just didn't care anymore. And he obviously. He, he essentially screamed and howled and then said, get on with it, fine, kill me. He dies, boom, victory, right? Endings A, B, C, and D, done. Hooray! With ending D, of course, Nier is gone, but hey, Shadow Lord's still defeated, everything's okay, right? Wrong, of course, these replicants can't reproduce, they are unable to have children. They need the androids to do so, the androids are now dead. Um, the Shadow Lord is gone, so none of the souls can ever return to their bodies. Vice is gone, Noir's gone, so basically the world ends. That's it. And the only person who's going to be left alive at the end of it is going to be Emil. Because he can't die. He's immortal. And he's probably the only one left. Except for, I presume, the androids in other areas, but I suppose Emil won't know that. Unless he was programmed to know that, who knows. So that's that. You're, you're killing the Shadow Lord completely dooms the world. That's your happy ending. I hope you enjoyed your happy ending. You earned it. You slaughtered thousands upon thousands of innocent people to get there. Killed children, women, blokes, anyone who got in your way without even a second thought. And then you doom the world. It's almost as cheerful as Dragon God. Dragon God has its moments as well. Dragon God has its hilariously bizarre moments, whereas Nier is just more miserable. That's the sort of difference between the two, I suppose. Unofficially, they call they call Nier Dragon God 3. And there is a fourth one coming out soon. I'll be curious to see if it ties in at all with Nier. It'd be nice if it did. There you go. So yeah, that, that's the general gist of it. I've missed out a huge amount of information that you really do need to go and have a look in Grim One, Grim One Near if you're interested. Um, I've probably missed some bits because I'm doing most of this off the top of my head. That, that is what I remember. There is a huge amount of backstory, like with the original Kaine back in the day, back in 2050 odd, and Kaine's grandmother, who was a military leader, for example. Things like this. Uh, Kaine's grandmother getting killed by a shade in the same way that the uh, replicant Kaine's grandmother gets killed by a shade thousands of years later, or a thousand years later or so. So, nasty little coincidences like that. Who Tyran is, for example. Tyran being one of the directors of the uh, project who made a meal, funnily enough. Then Tyran spent a thousand years body hopping because as punishment for his crimes they destroyed, they, they gestalted and then killed his body. Things like that. Lots of interesting facts in there. There's huge amounts of information. There's stuff on how uh, the weapon stories all fit together, um, the exact timeline, like including to the date, which is what I've been using, that kind of thing. Uh, there's in fact uh, one more thing on there, which is really quite special, and I'm just wondering if I should. I'm wondering if I should read it out. I d I'm not sure I should. Hmm. Depends how long it is, I suppose. Ooh, shall I? It'd be quite a long. It'd be quite a long thing. Um. I guess, I guess. Now, okay, so we've had ending D. How about we have ending E? This is what happens right at the very, very end after everything else is done. Uh, 
this will be story time with Halloween. So those who are not interested in ending E, I guess you might want to skip the next five minutes or so. So um, I'm reading this off straight off the screen, so I might do have a few mistakes. So I do apologise. And this is done obviously from Grim One Near, Grim One Near, which is obviously not translated particularly well in certain points. I will try and do it as best I can. Anyway, ending E. Kaine continues to have nightmares after Nier disappears, with a feeling that she's lost something precious. Kaine remembers saving a girl named Yona from Shadow Lord's castle, and that the Shade Tyran is gone for unknown reasons. Every time she thinks back to that moment, there's always something flashing before her, but dissipating right away. The troubled Kaine feels like taking a bad mood out on some shades. That's why she goes to the Forest of Myth after hearing the presence of shades there. When she arrives, she notices the forest is becoming something entirely different. It no longer looks like a forest, but instead a fusion of forest and machines with power cables covering the ground like tree roots, and every step filled with a slick green machine oil and sap. Just to interrupt here, just so to make this clear, the Forest of Myth is, is literally a cover. It's a gigantic computer. It's the computer system that, that cached the world and kept all the information handy. This computer system allows them to restart the Gestalt project should the worst happen. The Shadow Lord is dead, but this allows them to find a new Shadow Lord if the worst came to it. That's what the Forest of Myth does. It gathers memories, which is why anyone who lived near the tree was all screwed up. Anyway, going back to it. Kaine manages to arrive at the most eye-catching tree in the forest, and suddenly the vine-link cables, or the cable-like vines, tangle together in the shape of a young man. Hello, I... Before he could finish, Kaine lopped his head off. The body falls apart and is reformed in another area. How violent! Allow me to introduce myself. I am, and it says in brackets, random code, so make it your own code, the overseer of this forest. Random code? Kaine paused. The young man continues. You don't understand the language my name in, is in, so call me anything you like, whether it is the overseer or young man. You probably have a lot of things you don't understand right now. So what do you want to know? One, about the forest. Two, about me. Three, about the future. Pick one. Before Kaine can answer, the young man has started his explanations already. First, about the forest of myth. It is a terminal computer where the ancient people study the demonic element, the magic and quantum physics, also the magic and the dimension stuff. Just, I'm adding bits in here, sorry. The young man said the area is entering its final phase, and the shutdown sequence has already begun. As the young man continues his explanation, swarms of P-33 drones rush in and attacks Kaine. Of course, these being the, um, the gigantic robots from the uh, junk heap. They were used as uh, defense against the Legion back in the day. Anyway, on to the second point. The mysterious young man claims to be, to be in existence similar to that of Grimoire Vice. He controls all the demonic element, the life and death of gestalts and replicants, and the information of everything in that area. A P-33 humanoid robot appears as most of the P-33 drones are taken out. Kaine remembers fighting that thing in the junk heap, alongside someone else. But who was it? That's the most important person to you? If you can defeat these kids, I'll tell you why you're here, and the person that you cannot remember. The young man laughs as he summons a robot that looks exactly like Kaine. The third point, the future. Like I said, this world is a failure. We don't need robots and humans, and I've lost my reason to exist. Emil, with an unexplained extra pair of hands, appears out of nowhere and joins Kaine battling against the robot Kaine. Emil notices that the tree is the source of the power of everything, and the two concentrate their attacks on the enemy's core. The scenery, the trees, the ground, the human face dissolves into a giant puddle. Using the power of magic to fuse machines, humans, and plants together, this is the truth behind this world. Amazing. Amazing. A replicant like you can reach this level. Amazing. The young man babbles as he disappears. Power cables are whipping around in the wind as a storm is formed. Emile uh, protects Kaine as she approaches the magical power source. She just keeps on slashing her sword in the overpowering white light. Then suddenly, everything quietens down. As though she's arrived at the border between reality and a dream world. Kaine feels that, the, some, that something important is in front of her. She tries touching it. And she can vaguely tell it's the shape of the person. Kaine, don't. Tears flow on Kaine's face. Go back. Do not come here. Don't. She grabs onto it as it slips away, losing something important again. This is pissing me off. This is my life. I decide how I'll live. I don't need anyone else telling me what to do. It's my decision for you to die for you is your sword. Kaine cries out of fear of losing something important but losing that important thing again. Sorry, I have to try and redo this sometimes. It's a little it's not quite in as English as I'd hope. She's angry at how powerless she is. I must I must, I must get it back. I'll get it back no matter the price I have to pay. Someone pushes Kaine from the back. Kaine uses this to help her move forward. Stop screwing around. How can you just disappear all by yourself? I'm the one who decides what the, my meaning of life is. 
I'll do whatever it is I want with my own life. Get back here, you fucking bastards. Silence. The white light disappears, and the clear blue sky reappears. The forest of mist disappears, replacing it as a gigantic techno-organic flower. From afar, it re resembles a lunar tear. At the statement, Kaine is holding the person that is important to her. The person that she... It, this person that she is used to see, that that kind of person is a deep slum a slumber. Sorry. Emil floats closer. Kindly looks at the sky, thinking back to how someone set, uh, someone helped push her forward within that white light. When she clearly heard, I'll leave this guy to you, lingerie woman. They meet again. As a Mia with a slightly different body, an older Kaine, and a younger version of him. Yes, his name is. And it stops. That's ending E. Um, what I take from that, of course, is that the entire process of the gigantic computer is being shut down. And out of the computer's memories, Nier is reformed. Now, this is going on the Japanese one, so a younger Nier. But if you want to take this as the European version, or sorry, the American version as well, if you like, that would be the Nier with both of his eyes, the, the, the one where he first met the tree, if you like. Obviously, in the Japanese one, it's where he's slightly younger, but in this one, he's, he's 39 to the 44. So, yeah, that's ending E. And I like that. I, I, think, I think that gives something positive. The world is still going to end, but they get each other back at the end of the day. And those two really did care for each other towards the end, and it was nice. Although, whether she still remembers, she seems, she seems to be remembering who she lost. So, interesting. There's a lot of short stories as well. Um, I'm not going to read all those out. Because I think this... Sh it should be gone over in time, not listening to some English idiot warble on, doing it haphazardly as he goes through. It should be... If you're interested in the subject matter, then... Yeah. Go have a look. Go have a look in Grim One Near. Really look through it. And if you really love it, go on eBay and get yourself a copy. It's a beautiful book, I promise. It really is. Um, Something to clear up as well. Um, A lot of people were talking about Kaine's dress, the way she looks, the way she dresses. Uh, obviously emphasising her breasts, her ass, and her sort of... her body in general. Uh, The general consensus behind this is that Kaine having... Um, being a hermaphrodite is uncomfortable with the sort of male elements of her body and tries to emphasize the female um, aspects of her body as much as possible. That's that's what she felt comfortable with, and that's why she ends up wearing that. That's the general gist of that. Um, she feels deeply ashamed of how she looks, and the reason she does look like that is because the um, her replicant was mistakenly her data was corrupt basically when when she was recreated after she died the last time she was re recreated wrong so which in turn ended up with the uh, unfortunately very sad young lady that we ended up with so yeah interesting facts for you um i i think that's pretty much it that i can cover that i think i've covered the backstory the extra ending a few bits in between uh, I can't cover everything. I really can't. I'd be here for hours, um, and I can't do this as efficiently as I'd like to. There's a lot of text. There's a lot of things that need to be read through, and the backstory is fantastic. I wouldn't want to spoil it for you all without you all reading it. A few bits I didn't get around to doing. I didn't get around to doing the DLC. Um, the DLC basically is where you play as a younger version of Nier, where you go through his wife's diary, and very cryptic stuff starts appearing about you know, the Legion and the uh, White Chlorination Syndrome and stuff. Um, I will try and get around to the DLC at some point, um, but I'm going to have to replay the game again to do so, which is going to be irritating, so that'll be a little bit extra. There's not a lot to see, it's basically battle arenas, for those who care. It's 15 battle arenas. Um, there's a remix soundtrack in it, though, which sounds absolutely great. Um, I think that's pretty much it, I think. I think that's covered a lot of stuff. Anyone, anyone wants anything explained or c cleared up slightly, please add, add your questions to the comments. I will answer as many as I can, either in the comments themselves. There are also many other near experts around. I'm not saying I'm an expert, mind you, but there's many near experts around who could probably answer your questions as well. And, and people have been doing so during the videos, which has been great to see, and I appreciate that as well. And that's it, I think. That's uh, half an hour explanation and story time. Um, I covered as much as I could, poorly at points, but uh, that's it. And that's it with near. That's near done completely. I wanted to do near. I really did. It's an absolute treasure of mine. I th I think it's 
it's a very unique game. It really is, and I don't think we'll see something like it for a very long time, if ever again. It's bizarre, difficult, ugly at times, strange, but it has a charm to it. It has, it has something that just makes it. It has it. it makes it what it is, I suppose. It makes it an extremely enjoyable. It's very clever, very fun, a very thoughtful game. You care. It makes you think. And overall, it is a scary game to think about. It is a horror title at its core, no doubt. It's a different type of horror. Like I said in the very beginning, it is an adult horror. The world is going to end. Everyone is going to die. Killing families and children and slaughtering them. Innocent people just to get what you want. Are you doing the right thing? Or are they doing the right thing? Who is right? No one is right. No one knows. Who started it? Does it matter? That kind of thing. And... At the end of the day, that sums up horror pretty nicely, I think. Something that makes you think, and is genuinely quite scary. It's no jumping out of a closet and shouting at people, no, but... It's subtle, and it's horror in its own way. And that's it. That's everything to do in there. I will finish up the playlist, everything will be done, and I'm closing it on this. Like I said, I may make one extra video if there's loads of questions, or loads of stuff I've missed, or anyone want, people want to really see more explanation, or other bits. But I think... I think that's it. I really hope you've enjoyed Nier. I really, I also hope I've introduced you all to a brand new game, and some of you may go out and buy it and enjoy it themselves, or pick up the soundtrack or anything. Treat yourself. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for those who stuck with this LP. It means a lot. It's a definite favourite of mine, and I wanted to do it, so thanks. And until next time, guys.